So if you're preparing for your GCC law exam, here are some tips. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Zanele. What I'll be sharing with you guys today is some key tips on your GCC law exam. So those of you guys who are writing the abstract and the regulations, stay tuned. There are some key things that you can focus on, especially if you're preparing for the exam and it's almost crunch time. So I'll take you through a couple of things that you want to focus on within the OSH Act and within the different regulations. For those of you that are still familiarizing yourselves with the GCC, so it's the Government Certificate of Competency for Factories and for Mines, and this is an accreditation for electrical and mechanical engineers. You don't have to have an engineering degree to get the accreditation or the qualification. Do check out one of my videos, I'll leave a link below, on how you can get accepted into the examination center for you to write the two exams and for you to actually pass. So the first exam, depending on what you want to write first or second, I do suggest you write the law exam first. So the first is the law exam, which is based on your Occupational Health and Safety Act and its regulations. And your second exam is your practical exam, where they do bring out a very wide range of the syllabus of engineering, mechanical and electrical, and test to see that you can apply it practically. If you are preparing for the law exam, there are key things that you must focus on. Even if you're running out of time, try and find and allocate time to doing these things. The first is the definitions. So about 20% or even more, at times it's even 30 to 35% of your paper is based on definitions. So they're wanting to understand, you know and understand the differences between some of the terminology which is referred to quite often in the OSH Act and in the different regulations. As you guys know, you've got the Occupational Health and Safety Act, then you've got the different regulations. So you've got the general regulations, you've got the mechanical regulations, the electrical, and you've got the health regulations as well. I'll leave a link below to one of my videos that details how the OSH Act and the regulations are laid out. So section one of each act or regulation is the definitions, especially the key ones that you must know that will be detailed within the act. So a typical example is what's the difference between a hazard and a risk, or what's the difference between a lift and a goods hoist. And they will ask you those questions, especially where it's critical for you to understand the differences and how it pertains to the law. So hopefully you can see it and you can see the focus. This is the Occupational Health and Sa Safety Act. So this is the OSH Act. And the first section is definitions. So hopefully you guys have already gotten a, a copy of this. There is a PDF copy on the Department of Labor portal. And also with the amendments, they do also post on there what are the latest amendments to the Act. So do stay in touch with, with the Department of Labor portal for you to see any of the changes that have been made. Under the OSH Act, there is a definition of what an employee is according to the Act and what an employer is according to the act so do familiarize yourself as far as practicable you must understand the definitions of the act and all the different regulations the second key tip are the different sections of the OSH act that you must know so as you know you've got the occupational health and safety act and you also have the different regulations under general regulations you've got seven regulations under health there are seven under mechanical you've got five and under electrical you've got two so it is a lot to get through as much as this book doesn't look as much as this book doesn't look so thick um, as you can see the text is in small font so there is a lot to take in but you can be strategic and there are key ones that you definitely don't want to miss out on so the first is the occupational health and safety act definitely know that off by heart um, especially from start to end with the regulations, it's important for you to know the general administration regulations and the general safety regulations. Those are applicable across any factory, any organization or any mine. So do push for a level of understanding that is solid under your general regulations. So even if you're running out of time, you must set time aside to understand your mechanical regulations, especially around your driven machinery regulations, your general machinery regulations lifts and hoists and also pressure regulations so one of the key questions that they do ask about especially in your practical exam is around boilers around hvac systems around steam generation so you do want to have a level of understanding of pressure equipment a boiler steam generator something that you will likely find in many facilities obviously as a means of efficient heating at high pressure so you do want to understand boilers Try not to superficially go through that, but really have a, a level of depth and understanding of pressure equipment. Some examples of driven machinery are tools that you'll find in the workshop, so like grinders. 
So you've got your grinders, you've got mixers that you find in manufacturing facilities, you've got your guillotines and presses. These you often find in, in workshops. So those are common. So think about the common things that you'll see in any facility. So you know that you'll be exposed to lathes and grinders. So it's common for us to have lifts and goods hoists as well. So what are the differences between the two? Think about those common pieces of equipment that are often used in industry and try and familiarize yourself as far as possible with the legislation and what the requirement is for each. With the electrical installation regulation and the electrical machinery regulation, there are only two of them under electrical. So you do want to set time aside to go through both. There's no reason really um, why you'd want to do the one and not the other. So you focus on both of those regulations. What you also want to do is focus on the different SANS codes. In your definition section, they do make reference to specialized electrical installation. There is a reference to the different SANS codes that you must go and read. So don't take it for granted that just a mention of the SANS code is enough understand what the different codes are and what they entail. So all in all, the paper is there to test that you understand the law, you'll be able to apply it back in your workplace. There are fundamentals that we see on a daily basis, but really must to link it back to the law. But one of the key things I said in some of my other videos is that it's important that whatever you read out of the OSH Act or out of the book, that you go and see where it is applicable and whether you're compliant in your workplace or not. And that way you ensure or increase the chances of you having it stick for longer. So wishing you all the very best in your GCC exam. Feel free to comment below with any questions that you might have on the OSH Act. A lot of you guys are already contacting me on LinkedIn and via email. So I am open to share any of my insights, any resources, and answer any of the questions that you might have. There are companies that do offer aid and studies. Polycraft Engineering is one of them, so do check them out as well. Also, the website to the Department of Labor will be in the description below. Go out there and conquer, and remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and lead for change. Shop.